Hello, and welcome to another C3 Stingray video. If you, haven't, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do and hit that notification button, like button, all those other buttons. Today I'm going to rebuild calipers, and I know I did this a few years ago with a lip seal rebuild kit. This time I'm doing an O-ring conversion kit, which I now have available on my website at c3stingray.com. Taking the calipers off the 79 parts car, which I really have nothing to put these calipers on once I rebuild them, but I'm going to rebuild them just to show you how it's done and then maybe save them for my wide body that I hope to work on by this summer. And let's just watch the video. Now this is my 1979 Corvette parts car and I took the calipers off the front of this and they're not in the best shape in the world, but I think they'll work for this video. So you can see they are here. And these two bolts here that hold the halves together, they're 13 sixteenths. Sometimes it's easier to break these loose while they're on the car, otherwise you're going to have to put them in a vise to break them loose because they're on there really tight. But I'm taking one of these and putting it in the sandblaster while it's still all together because it's kind of hard. I can see it was going to get hard to get some of this crap off of these. But I was able to get a lot off of this one and now that I have the outside cleaned up pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and take it apart completely. I didn't want to do that with anything open in the sandblaster so I left everything together. And now since these are already broken loose, I can take these 13 16 bolts out and separate the two halves. Now taking these halves apart, I can clean around on the inside. And I'll just take a wire brush and some brake cleaner fluid and just clean these as best I can. Because we will be painting these later. Now I have this lip seal puller tool that I got from Harbor Freight. It's like $8. And you can use a screwdriver and do the same thing. I just like this tool because it just makes it really easy. You pull the seal out, pull the piston out, and that spring. And once you get those out, you really want to check the walls to make sure the walls of your caliper are in good shape. Like there's no, you know, mark scars. You know, and you just see, you can tell by looking at it how it feels and how it looks these are worth rebuilding or not these actually as bad as these look on the outside the inside look really good so I'm moving my way around if I pull out the pistons and the springs and the seals from the other half and as you can see now I'm cleaning the insides and still kind of just dousing the whole thing down with some carb cleaner there I have your brake cleaner whatever you have there to clean them up just to get what gunk you can off because like I said we're gonna be painting these while we got them all apart might as well paint them now when I paint these things I, what I do is I just take the old pistons and seals that I just took out of there and kind of push them back in that way it protects those cylinder walls because you don't want to get paint on that so I just push them back in and just just basically to protect the cylinder walls from the paint and I also tape off the halves just not to gain paint in between the two halves whether they bolt together now I actually got my um, paint my caliper paint at Walmart and I think it was like nine, ten dollars there. Where O'Reilly's, they wanted fifteen dollars for the same thing. So, you might want to just take a trip to your local Walmart and probably pick up a can of paint for caliper paint for only ten bucks. Now, here's the O-ring kit that I actually sell. You get the four pistons, the four O-rings, the four seals. And you also get the two little o-rings where the halves go together it's a nice little kit you can find out more about that at c3stingray.com so here we are untaping and everything and as you can see some paint got out there i'm going to clean that one up a little bit more but where you can see where the seals are that really help protect from the paint pop these out I think that works better than trying to tape it off or put some cardboard or put in rags or whatever. It's just an easier way to protect the whole area. Now this is something I probably should have did before, but I'm blowing out the, the passageways for the brake fluid just to make sure there's any junk or anything that's clogging that up. 
Uh, you don't want to be standing over that when you do that because if there's any crap in there, it's going to blow right up in your face. But I'm doing this on all the holes just to make sure all the passages are clear and there, there isn't any brake, old brake fluid or gunk in there. It's going to blow out. Now, I should have taken this out at the very beginning or at least broke it loose is this bleeder valve. Because sometimes these bleeder valves don't want to come out and they'll break off and that would have been a big problem. Um, you need to like tap them a little bit if you can't get them to come loose and then just work them out. It's probably a good idea to, to do that at the beginning and not towards the end like I'm doing it. And as you can see we're going to put the first piston in now and I have a little a little dish there that I've got brake fluid in and a little brush and I'm brushing the o-ring with some brake fluid and I'm going to brush the cylinder walls with some brake fluid just to make everything nice and easy to slip together. You just want to roll this over the piston and you'll, you'll feel it snap into place. And you just want to make sure that it's you know not twisted or anything. And put your spring back on and push it down into place. Now you want to put your seal which you can work it right around the top of the piston. You can feel it snap into place. It just pops right into place. Now you're going to have to knock this seal down to make it stay. And it's a, I have an inch and five eighths socket that I'm using here and this works out really good. You do not want to hammer this in. You just want to tap it. Tap it until you work it all the way down. I just tap it and then I take my finger right along the edge and make sure it's not sticking up anywhere. And if it is, I put it back on and tap it some more until I get it flat all the way around and that's pretty much it and that's how you'll do each piston I've already got one in three more to go as I said the o-ring system is like really easy to do is with the other one you have to work that lip in as you can see doing this if you see my other video with the lip seal caliper rebuilds which I also sell those at c3stingray.com these are way easier to do because you're basically just pushing in the place where the lip seal you have to kind of work it in which one's better I really don't know I and mean, there's a lot of debate on that which one's better I think they both do the job but this one is definitely easier to install than the lip seal one and as I said you just work that seal around the top edge of that piston and you can feel it click into place when you do it and then you just want to put your socket over the top of that and just keep tapping it until you get that seal all the way smooth all the way around the edge and you can feel it just with your finger by moving along where it's might be sticking up a little bit and just put the socket back on and tap it a few more times and it's actually a really easy and fast process. Because they really don't need to show the second part. Because it's pretty much the same thing over and over again. But let's just do this in fast motion and get these last two pistons in. Wanna put that brake fluid on, put the O-ring on, put the seal on, tap it down. And there we go. As you can see, the small two O-rings go in between the halves, right there, where those valves, where those those you know, passages that we blew out just earlier. And we're going to have to torque these down. But right now, we just want to get them together, held together, because we're going to have to put them in the vise to actually torque them down. Get it. Now here I am breaking loose that bleeder valve, which I should have did at the beginning. Luckily this one came out without any issue. So I'm going to take that one out and put a different one in or clean this one up. I actually ended up cleaning this one up because there was nothing wrong with it. 
And these are the bolts you got to torque down. And they're 130 foot pounds for those front calipers. So you're going to have to put it in a vise. You can see I got that one wrapped in cloth. And the, the rear ones are only 60 foot pounds, so that's not so bad. So it's 130 for the front ones. Well, there you have it. There's a rebuilt caliper with the O-ring conversion kit. I think it went pretty well. And if you need one of these kits, like I said, you can check out my website at c3stingray.com. I sell the O-ring conversion kit, and I also sell the lip seal kit, so they're both available. Um, I got a lot of videos coming out, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I just did one on the C5. I'm going to be doing another one on the C5 pretty soon. I got games. I got toys. I got movies. I got tons of stuff coming out. Actually, I'm going to be dismantling a 77 Corvette pretty soon. It's missing the engine and transmission, but everything else is there. So if anyone out there has a special request on how to take something off or how to see how something's taken off, let me know. Maybe I can work that into a video as well. And I guess that is it. There's a lot of stuff going on. This garage is a total disaster area, as usual. But I'll see you on the road.